We mentioned in chapter one that the presence of the vowel pointing we use to indicate the vowels on the Hebrew consonantal text came from the Masoretes, and that it was supplied to the text at a time when Hebrew had ceased to be a living language, and there was a concern that speakers would forget which vowels were appropriately applied to the text. As we said, a native speaker using a language can usually discern which vowels should be applied to consonants without seeing them. We used the example of text message. However, even native speakers at times will see a word that could be ambiguous, that could take more than one set of vowel pointings. For instance, YR. Is this year or your? So even before the time of the Masoretes, there was an earlier provision of vowel pointing to the text, except it wasn't vowel pointing. It was an attempt to represent vowels in some words, and the attempt was used by supplying consonants that did not actually serve as consonants, but were indicators that a certain vowel should be placed at the location of the consonant. This use of consonants to represent vowels in Hebrew writing is called matres lexionis, the mothers of reading. The singular of matres is a mater, and a mater is an initial indication of a vowel letter at its place in some Hebrew words. Unlike the Masoretic vowel pointing, however, the presence of matres varies word by word and is not at all systematic through the text. Matres are more common with some words than others, but there is no obvious or discernibly consistent pattern of when and where matres will occur. The provision of matres to the Hebrew consonantal text very, very significantly predates the Masoretic vowel pointing. The matres were an attempt to take the consonantal text and indicate certain vowels. For instance, the Hebrew word, which would have been written yod mem, was known that it should be pronounced yom, and the o sound, the Masoretes would indicate with the holom. At the time that matres were provided, the original yod mem had the provision of a vav between, which was an indicator to the reader that this should be pronounced yom. You can imagine doing this in our language. If English had no vowel letters and a scribe wished to indicate an I sound, one potential convention to do it would be to write an extra Y in the middle of the word. So you could have the comment, tip your hat. And if, this, if the scribe were particularly concerned for you to know that it was an I sound in tip your hat, maybe it would be written with a mater Y as tip your hat. The English letter Y, in fact, functions very similarly to this. Though we usually treat a Y as a consonant, as in the word beyond, we can use Y to mark a vowel sound in our language, such as the English word tyrant. It is very important that you remember that the three letters used as matres, He, Vav, and Yod, when used as matres, are not consonants. They are vowel markers. They are not part of the consonants that make up the word. The following are the matres that frequently occur. In A-class vowels, simply the use of a he to represent a long A sound. In I-class vowels, you could have the use of a yod to represent either a long I sound, a short E sound, or a long E sound, or a hey to indicate the short or long E sound. 
And in the U-class vowels, the use of vav to indicate long o or long u, or possibly the use of he to indicate a long o. When the Masoretes came to the text to provide their vowel pointing, they received a text that already had matres in its text. When they did their work, the Masoretes did not remove any mater. Instead, they simply provided their vowel pointing alongside the pre-existing matres. So the Masoretes would have received a text written like this that they knew was to be pronounced yom because of the presence of a vav mater. Onto the text yom, they would simply add the holum to indicate the vowel sound. That means in a word with a mater, the vowel is in fact doubly marked. The vav marks the vowel, so does the holum. The combination then of these possible matres and the, the Masoretic vowel pointing yields a bunch of different mater and vowel point combinations. For A-class vowels, the only possible mater is a he, and it is in fact used to indicate a long he. So if the Masoretes were to find the consonant bait followed by a he mater, they would mark appropriately a comets to indicate a long a vowel, ah. The combination of the comets and the he mater is then called a comets he. The transliteration of matres is the vowel sound with a circumflex over it. And the pronunciation of a comets he is the long a, a as in father. In the I-class vowels, the fact that both yod and he can be used as matres, and yod with three vowel sounds, he and he with two, yields five possible combinations. You will note in each case the name of the mater is simply the name of the vowel plus either yod or he. A hirek yod is a long I sound, I as in unique. A sigol yod is the long is the short e sound, as e as in bet, or a sere yod is a long e sound, the e as in they. A sigol he is a short e sound, the e as in bet, and a sere he is the long e sound again, the e as in they. Then within the u class vowels you have the possibility of a vav or he mater. A vav with an o sound is called a holum vav, and it makes the long o as in pole. A vav with a u sound is written uniquely as the vav and then a dot to its left. This is called a shurek. It's transliterated u with a circumflex, pronounced the u as in rule. It is the only mater that has a name other than simply the vowel name plus the consonant name. And then finally, a he, when used as an o mater, is called a holum he, transliterated, transliterated o with a circumflex, and pronounced as a long o, as in o in pole. Remember that the presence or absence of a mater does not affect a word's meaning, nor does it affect a word's pronunciation. The word yom would be the word yom, whether written without a mater or with a mater. In each case, the word is pronounced the same way. And in fact, in a sense, it is spelled the same way, simply with the consonants yod and mem. It is simply a different way of marking the vowel sound, either without a mater or with a mater. When a word is written with matres, the spelling is called a full spelling or a full writing. When the same word is written without matres, the writing is termed a defective spelling or defective writing. 
And even though those terms seem to imply a value judgment, there is no difference in meaning between full and defective spellings. For instance, the name David could equally be written as David. It is the same name with the same referent in either spelling.